every brand was following a traditional pattern that was making uh, you know collection season wise so either there was a summer collection or winter collection uh, i think again depends few brands are burning uh, but you know i come from a very different uh, school of thought a steady state profitability is the key because the compounding effect of that yeah. is almost 2.5x growth every year tell us how is that strategy for you where are you spending that money where is that money you are uh, trying to spend uh so it is a mix of a lot of things right we we've, we've sort of created like a 360 degree web around every consumer you know my 25th lakh customer will not come at the cost my 2.5 lakh correct yeah yeah of course uh, no. a customer came in right mm-hmm. that will keep increasing but the overall blend of this will will start decreasing mm-hmm. once you have a very strong retention rate Welcome to the Curious Club podcast. So today we have a guest who's disrupting the fast fashion industry. He appeared on the Shark Tank and got an all shark deal. Let's talk numbers because we understand that better. In 3 years they have reached a monthly GMV or sales of 30 crores and that too being profitable. I think a lot of you would have already guessed who our next guest is. Without much ado, let me introduce Siddharth, founder and CEO of Snitch on the show. Welcome to the show Siddharth. Hey Sid, thanks thanks for having me here. Thank you so much. So I think let's stick to the tradition of our show. Uh, yeah, what's been your journey like before starting Snitch? Uh, been a very long journey, yar. I mean, I started off at the age of fifteen, sixteen. Uh, so I started with a very small retail store in Bangalore, wherein I used to sell these surplus clothing. So Bangalore was a manufacturing hub, and there were a lot of uh, factories around Bangalore. And clothing was passion to me. So I was in the morning college shift, seven thirty to twelve was my college. uh and post lunch i used to run this store um so i used to procure these factory leftovers and sell them in retail the store started you know doing really well uh, a lot of other retailers were interested to buy similar sort of merchandise hmm. that's when i got into trading where i used to you know procure more and uh, you know sell it out to retailers across india and keep the profits in my store uh and yeah i mean was doing fairly good enough was making 30 40000 rupees a month uh, at that age uh and uh, that went on till 2012 uh, 2012 something really strange happened so while dealing with these factories there was one particular factory who was ready to sell out the fabric as well mm. uh, and this was beautiful shirt fabric uh you know uh, i had a buyer ready i was making 2 and 1/2 lakh rupees during that transaction um so i i borrowed money uh from my friends and family and did that transaction but to my bad luck the factory had an audit and they couldn't dispatch it for like 25 to 30 days okay uh And that's when yeah you, know, you know i was basically stuck with that fabric uh because the buyer now told me hey boss it's too late and i, I don't need this fabric anymore oh. uh and i was basically stuck uh, in at that point uh then have space to keep that fabric kept it at a friend's garage uh made these very small swatches of those fabrics and distributed to the network that i had built uh and there was one particular you know retailer in bombay who had about 17 18 stores and he called me up and he was like sit the fabric is fabulous uh can you make sure it's out of there uh and i was stunned because production was not my background i didn't know uh, what is the process of manufacturing a shirt right uh he just told me and 200 300 piece sample bana ke bech do let's see if i can bail you out of this situation uh that's when the real hustle started um you know the big unit was not ready to do that very small moq uh-huh. found a very small unit sat there for almost about you know 4 to 6 weeks understood the whole process of production uh you know how our silhouettes made uh, how our patterns made what sort of threads are used you know what is an spi etc etc uh end of 6 weeks designed those shirts myself and sent it out to bombay uh, about 300 350 pieces um over the weekend all those shirts flew off his counter and uh, oh. you know he just called me up and told me convert that entire fabric into shirts uh ended up converting it and uh, i was i made about 6 and 1/2 lakh rupees uh, while i was making 2 and 1/2 lakh selling the fabric correct uh so that was the turning point um we you know then i understood manufacturing is a much bigger game uh, and from 2012 until 2019 mm. uh this is what i was doing i was running like a buying house wherein we never owned any factory we used to contract manufacture but we used to design manufacture and deliver uh, you know uh, across uh, different sort of brands uh, i've done productions for madura arvind mm. uh, done productions for landmark group uh, you know vmart dmart etc uh scale that business to almost about 60 70 crore in arr uh but then back of the mind uh you know uh i always had this thought of starting of you know starting something which is my own uh and i was looking at the sort of gaps which were available 
Uh, so the the number one thing that I observed was every brand was following a traditional pattern that was making uh, you know collection season wise. So either uh, there was a summer collection or winter uh, collection. There was no brand who was focusing on um, you know fashion on maybe a monthly or a weekly or a daily level, uh, right? Uh, while brands like H and M and Zara were disrupting the correct model of business. Uh, and then I asked myself, why aren't brands doing this? Hmm. And, you know, what I found out was the supply chain was completely broken. Uh, you know, every brand used to take almost 8 to 10 months to get their collection out. Uh, oh. And that was because of the huge gap in the uh, entire supply chain itself. Hmm. Uh, supposedly, you're a brand. Uh, you know, you want to uh, uh, manufacture maybe this t-shirt. Huh. You'll have to make that tech pack, send it out to your vendors. Huh. You know, the vendors will just then, uh, you know, procure the raw materials, materials required for sampling first uh, that takes them out them about you know 20 to 25 days then they would make that sample send you for comments then you mm. will pass your comments then he has to procure for bulk which takes him about, almost two and a half three months oh. and then that entire cycle usually takes about you know six to eight months um so i mean it mm. took me about six to eight months just to understand how do you crack the supply chain and 2019 is when we started um, you know snitch again more like a b2b brand uh, because that is what it, uh, you know, I yeah. was always into. Mm. Wherein we used to manufacture products on the label snitch and then distribute to retailers across India. Uh, we got tremendous success initially itself because every day retailers were getting new styles. Uh, you know, their churn rate was really high. Uh, MOQ was really low. We used to ship as low as 25 to 50 pieces. Oh. Um, to give you an example, right? If, if you own a multi-brand outlet store, ah. uh, you have 20 brands. Supposedly, your um, you're, you want to buy a US Polo stock, right? Mm. Uh, US Polo will call you twice in a year, showcase their collection, you will have to place your orders and then okay. they will deliver you within a certain time frame and you will have to predict your sales. Huh. With us, every morning you get an update saying which is coming, in, uh, uh, you know, which is a new product which is coming. Retailers wow. used to just order it, okay. uh, you know, online and then we used to ship it, right? That gave us tremendous success initially mm. itself. But within nine months of our operations, the pandemic hit us. And we were left with a huge inventory. Uh, so the first thing that came to my mind was either go on an Aussie or a Mintra and try and liquidate stock. Uh, but then A, realized, you know, that we wouldn't be making any money there and B, the brand would not get any recognition. Correct. We'll just be one amongst these thousands uh, there. Uh, that's when, you know, uh, July 2020 uh, is when we started our own website. Uh, barely a team of four people. Uh, you know, 35 products on the website, uh, two racks in the corner of the office was our warehouse. Uh, and since then, it's been three years, uh, three roller coaster years for us. Um, you know, year one, we did about 11 crores, year two, we closed at 44. Year three, we did 110, and now we are on track to hit a 250 crores sort of a number this year. Wow. Uh, and all of this being bootstrapped. Uh, you know, we just launched our app about uh, two years back. Um, we completed 2 million downloads just yesterday. Uh, and you know, 55% of our D2C revenue comes through the app. Wow. So this is a fast fashion brand. So just to explain our viewers what fast fashion is, uh, what are the customers you're targeting to your brand? Like I told you, right? Um, so there are, fashion is fashion. Uh, mm. Fast fashion obviously means the churn rate, churn rate. styles are much fast. uh, faster, right? Like I told you, traditionally every brand was making collection season wise. Mm. So there was a summer collection, there is a winter, winter collection. collection. Uh, or few brands make four seasons, like there is a summer, spring, summer, winter, autumn, winter. Mm. Uh, fast fashion is, um, you know, more towards bringing in new styles, uh, you know, faster and then, uh, you know, start replicating the ones that are selling much higher and then fade. the others which are not selling will fade away. Mm. Uh, so that's, that's entirely about the business. Uh, so typically we drop uh, anywhere between, you know, 100 to 200 pieces per style. And then depending on the kind of ROS, that is the rate of sale every product okay. delivers, the technology, uh, the tech that we built itself will show us, you know, how many pieces to be made, what sort of sizing, etc. Uh, so that's towards us uh, uh, and fast fashion. But uh, talking about customers, our typical customers are, you know, in, in the age group of 18 to 25, mm. uh, largely, uh, who, um, you know, are either college students or maybe working, uh, who... These are men who, you know, were not associating with the brands which existed in India, right? Mm. Uh, today, if I tell you to go and buy, uh, you know, an Alan Solly shirt, you will not resonate with the brand. Right. Because you you as a personality are very different from what your father was. Yeah. Uh, and it is a very different sort of age gap itself, right? Mm. Uh, and uh, so typically our customers are, um, you know, age, ages about 18 to 25. 
uh, you know people who want to not only look fashionable but um, you know also uh, uh, feel good about their clothing uh, and are these customers different previously like from the previous cust- like from the other customers because they are buying more often uh, than the earlier generation used to be yeah i mean look uh, you've never seen men centric brands right uh-huh. uh you saw you saw beardo coming in then there was the mac correct. company uh-huh. a lot of men centric brands started coming in correct. uh you know everyone wants that right swipe on tinder everyone uh-huh. wants their instagram feed to uh-huh. fresh right correct. uh and what does clothing do i mean mm. the first thing that i would look at you is your clothes Closing. uh and you know that enhances your overall personality and everyone wants to um you know come up with an old, own style of themselves uh, and that's why you know our tagline is discover your style we made a lot of products you come and you discover your style yeah so i'm also very intrigued and intrigued to understand how does from designing to final product how the that process works for you and you said you, because you cracked supply chain then this is something the big disruption Absolutely. we have cracked so just explain us uh, how does that work um, so basically we have a design team in house uh, which actually reads a lot of uh, you know global trends uh, and comes up with new designs every right. single day we have a sampling unit in house which actually makes all the samples in house there is an r&d team which actually does a lot of r&d towards every product that we make mm-hmm. towards you know fabric you know shrinkage bleed etc uh-huh. uh and then uh you know we have a merchandising team which actually sources all the raw materials uh and then there is a production team which actually take care of all the factories so typically what we do is we acquire factory on a contract basis mm-hmm. wherein the factories are exclusive to us correct um you know if, if i tell you that said your factory's capacity is 20000 pieces i'm going to pay you for that entire 20000 uh you know capacity mm. uh, but you'll have to just manufacture for me and i will tell you what is the sort of minimum order quantity that i want okay. i could give you 50 pieces or 500 pieces or 5000 pieces per style you will have to manufacture for it mm. the only uh, problem to, for these factories was um you know making sure they were fulfilling their entire capacity mm. and that mm. is a fixed cost right he has to pay their wages he Correct. has um, you know uh. some sort of interest rate on the machineries that he's bought etc so there is a fixed cost we told him boss we will take care of this yeah. uh, you know our team will train you your employees will upgrade your machinery hmm. uh, and also you know make your factory so agile that you will be able to do anything so, for example our shirt manufacturing unit can also make boxers okay. right our trouser manufacturing unit can also make denims hmm. um, so that's the sort of agility that we've built with every factory um so i mean the process is very simple mm. uh, the factory just has to cut stitch and pack everything else is taken care of by us right. you know from procurement of raw materials to quality checks mm. to the inline setup of the batch etc everything is taken care of by us mm. got it and these the process is like fully machine oriented or uh, manual work is also required over there so stitching right. and everything would be yeah yes. stitching obviously is a manual, manual work yeah. uh, but the sort of tech that we built at the back end helps us understand and gives us what factory is working yeah, at what, what capacity uh, you know how do you mm. uh, put in the next style um, how do you judge on which style is going to which factory uh, uh, and correct. you know we start grading the factories mm. with scores uh, so next time we know you know if if the, if one particular factory's you know score is decreasing how do we upgrade that mm. or how do we um, you know do we have to think of removing that factory for example uh, and this is the basis of um, you know the sort of returns that we got of that one particular style mm. got it. and from this process uh from your design team to final product ready what's the like cycle like days wise so we do it typically within 25 days yeah which okay. usually typically any brand takes almost about 8 months okay okay uh, that brand big take, uh, absolutely absolutely big, yes, so it's not like we have some third eye right yeah everyone is seeing the same say or trend every brand is doing the same thing yeah. the ability to do really fast, fast is the key and it's an execution game got it talking about the unit economics uh, how does your unit economics works let's say 100 rupees revenue is there what's the breakup of it, of that so typically our gross margins are anywhere between 53 to 54% uh, out of which um, you know marketing eats out about 27% of it right. um shipping and logistics is anywhere between 8 to 9% and after all operational expenses are a bit uh, typically is between um 6 to 8% currently is there an industry standard over here like what are the industry leaders making it uh i think again depends few brands are burning uh but you know i come from a very different uh school of thought wherein i i obviously thought uh, you know creating a brand and business means is equal to profit <laughs> but why yeah 
uh, so we've always been profitable. I think industry standard again varies from brand to brand. Mm. Uh, few are looking at growth, few are looking mm. towards profitability. Mm. Uh, for us, it is you know um, growing five to seven percent month on month uh, mm. with you know so a steady state profitability is the key because the compounding effect of that yeah. is almost two point five x growth every year. Got it. And and what scale you have reached till now? Like monthly, if you consider the sales. So last month, our GMV was close to about thirty one crores. Wow, thirty crores, and in yeah. that, that's the growth in three years. And you're planning to close, let's say this year. Last year, how much it was? Financial year twenty three. Uh, last year we closed at hundred and ten crores. This year we should do at least a two twenty plus. Got it. In net sales. Yeah. Got it. And how much capital you have deployed in this? Like plus equity plus debt. Would be so we are hundred percent bootstrap. Correct. As of uh, today, uh, the debt that I have on the business is close to about four and a half five crores. Hmm. Uh, plus, you know, my capital is around uh, close to about six to seven crores. So overall, about uh, eleven to twelve crores is what. Got it. And, and it's been over a period of time. Of course, over a period of time. Yeah. And you appeared on the Shark Tank, and yeah. that got you a deal of one point five CR from Sharks. Yeah. Uh, tell us how was that like presenting on Shark Tank? What was that journey like? Oh, it was a surreal experience. Yeah. I mean. Uh, you know, to be honest, uh, that was not my plan. You know, my marketing team just told me, "Boss, we've done this. You'll have to go." Oh, okay. And uh, <laughs> you know, it was a very, very uh, amazing experience. It was all real, uh, as what you see there. Mm. Uh, the pitch goes on for almost about two hours, but then you know, okay, uh, they just show you about fifteen minutes, minutes of it. Of it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the experience is surreal, and uh, you know, a lot of new learnings. Uh, and since then, I've been really good friends with everyone there. Yeah. Uh, and you know uh, any any sort of contacts that you need, any sort of networking that you need, they're always there. Uh, so that that's been a hmm. uh, amazing amazing sort of experience. Yeah. As you mentioned, marketing team uh, pushed you for that because when you appear for fifteen minutes on a Sony television on a prime time, absolutely, that's worth of crores absolutely, of marketing. Absolutely, I I mean I that's why I tell entrepreneurs <laughs> right, even if you don't intend to raise money, please go there. Go there. There's no loss. Ya to aap kuch seek kya hoga, hmm. ya to aapko kuch gyan milega. Or you will get free marketing. Free right? marketing for for an entrepreneur, that sort of marketing is worth about five to seven crores. Yeah, which you're getting free of cost. You know, I was even paid for my flight tickets and hotel stay. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not. In, I'm literally not spent a penny. Correct. Yeah. And so, uh, okay, got it. And and uh, as a D two C brand, uh, uh, what are the key metrics you track? Uh, being an online brand, of course, you're expanding offline. But being an o- online brand, what are the key metrics you track? Uh, a lot of things are uh, so the number one is uh, you know the sort of conversion rate uh, uh, you know okay. yeah the number of sessions versus uh, you know the number of add to carts versus uh, you know what is your actual C two C versus your conversion rate uh, this is the number one metric that I personally look at uh, which is top of the funnel middle and then bottom mm. uh, and what is the actual sort of conversion. Second is the average order value. Uh, is that increasing? Is it decreasing? How Correct. how could you enhance on the average order value? Because that is a very important metric for a need to see brand, especially uh, who's selling online, mm. right? Because there is a certain fixed amount of CAC which is uh, there, and plus you have your logistic delivery cost. Unless you have a, a higher AOV, uh, it is very difficult to make money out there, right? Mm. Uh, and then. You know, there's a whole set of dashboard from you know CAC to CAC for new customers. What is the CAC for overall consumers? Uh, you know, how many? What was the bounce rate like? Uh, if the bounce rate is increasing, what are the reasons? Uh, you know, for the same. Uh, yeah. So typically, I mean, uh, these are these are uh, the key metrics that I look at. And what are these key metrics for Snitch? Like for conversion ratio? Like how many coming? So on app, we have a conversion rate of three. Three to four percent, which is a phenomenal number. Correct. Uh, I think uh, the next closest would be uh, something like a Mintra or a Nazio, which is at five percent plus. Mm. Uh, and on the website, it's at about one point five to one point eight percent. Got it. Yeah. You have been an online brand, and now you have started expanding into offline stores. And this is a story which I am seeing across boards in D two C brands. So, what's been the reason? Like, what I'm missing here? Why? Why everyone is going offline? No, that was always on the plan. Yeah. Like, uh, I think the timing was really important for us. Um, so, uh, you know, one good thing that happened to us was, uh, you know, we didn't get carried away during that 2021-2022 wave, right? right? While brands were raising money, everyone was behind growth, etc. We thought, no, let's sit back and, uh, you know, make the route really strong, which is the base of the business mm. in terms of supply chain, in terms of customer experience, brand, uh, you know, supply chain, etc. 
uh, once you know we did that and now it was obviously on the plan that we will go offline uh, and the timing was very important so um, last it, it's been about two months that we've yeah. started with our first store well, in Bangalore which is at about 2500 square foot and which is doing 1.2 crores in net sales per monthly month. Yeah, which is a phenomenal number. I, I mean, I don't see any, yeah. um, you know, fashion brand doing those sort of numbers. Um, apparel is a touch and feel huh. factor, right? Hmm. Uh, how I look at the business is the umbrella effect. You know, e-commerce is towards speed. Uh, and, uh, you know, offline is more for uh, stability, right? Uh, e-commerce will give you, um, uh, our online business will give you the sort of speed that you require. And then uh, you would get stability and build a brand Correct. being Omni, right? Mm. Uh, so that's the whole thought process. Uh, you know, for in offline, my conversion rate is much better. Mm. My average order value is almost 2.5x of what we're doing online. Uh, you know, the return rate is almost 0%. Correct. Yeah, there are no customer returns, nothing. The experience inside the store, um, you know, is uh, is something that customers would actually get associated with the brand. brand. Uh, so a lot of factors. Uh, and now we are looking to expand our offline journey as well. You've expanded your offline store. Is it in mall or in an independent store? Like So this is a semi-high street store, I would say. Okay. And, you know, we wantedly chose that because we wanted to see the brand pull effect as well. Uh, you know, typically what happens is any brand who's going offline will choose the best spot possible Correct. and then open a store there. Mm. We said, no, we'll go with an unconventional way. Uh, let's test the brand out, right? Because uh, <laughs> it's a heavy <laughs> capex business uh, and we'll, there are fixed costs attached when you're mm. going offline. Yeah. Uh, so we said, let's try out with one store in a semi-high street, uh, you know, sort of locality. Uh, did zero marketing there. Uh, we did not call a celebrity to cut the ribbon. Uh, you know, it was just a WhatsApp message to all our existing customers saying that, hey, hey guys, we're opening, you know, this Saturday. Uh, and the store was flocked with customers by, uh, you know, afternoon itself. Uh, so that's the sort of love that we've received uh, and hoping that, you know, we'll continue this. Got it. And in expansion wise, what are you planning? Like where, where are you going first? Uh, so we are looking to open anywhere between four to five stores this this financial year in okay. Bangalore mm. uh, and about uh, seven stores in Gujarat. Uh, so that's the plan for now. We'll, we'll be doing almost about uh, you know eight to ten stores should be operational by the March of FY24. Okay, you mentioned that metrics are uh, of course higher. What are the key metrics? Of course, you're learning along the way. What would be the key metrics you'll be tracking in the offline stores? Offline stores, again, you know, your rent to revenue percentage is the number one, Correct. you know, factor for us. We benchmarked that to be at 10%. Ah. Uh, and your second is your sort of operational expenses that every store has, right? Your salaries, your rent, right. uh, you know, your incentives, yeah. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that, again, should be anywhere between 10 to 12% is what we've marked on. Mm. Uh, overall, it could be anywhere between 20 to 22% is what we've marked. But again, still very early days. Correct. Correct. It's just the first store. Uh, and I, I think we'll keep optimizing this as we scale further. Got it. Also, you mentioned about your spending around 27% on uh, brand and marketing. Tell us how is that strategy for you? Where are you spending that money? Where, where's that money you are uh, trying to spend? Uh, so it is a mix of a lot of things, right? We, we've sort of created like a 360 degree web around every consumer. Mm. Uh, today, I know my customers are there, you know, majorly on their phone. That's why we are Correct. we built an app. app making sure that, you know, we are there in their phone every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, second one is uh, obviously performance marketing, which we do on all, uh, across, you know, Instagram, yeah. uh, Facebook, Google ads, etc. Uh, we do a lot of content and we work with a lot of creators, Creator. um, you know, more on barter, mm. uh, which actually, you know, talks about the brand, about the experience, about, yeah. you know, the product, etc. Uh, you know, we've done multiple campaigns around um, customers itself, right? Uh, so we the last campaign that we did was be our ambassador. Mm. Uh, if you are a consumer of Snitch, you come to our website, um, buy a product, and then you have an opportunity to become the brand ambassador for us. Uh, and then we would incentivize you on the you know sort of sale that you get. The only thing that you have to do is put your um, uh, you know image on your story with the coupon code that we give you, mm. uh, and that actually gave us a lot of organic growth reason being that you know if you have about even about 200 or 300 followers they're your close-knit family right mm. uh, people who trust you or right. your friends and uh. family and that actually started giving us a lot more mm. organic growth so i mean we've done a number of such campaigns mm. uh being a digital first brand um you know i i believe that you'll have to be there everywhere uh we've done you know ads on tinder snapchat 
um, you know, which well, well, from your customer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Got a lot of offline events mm-hmm. and colleges, fests, etc. Got it. And is it also when you said you're expanding offline, uh, will that help to reduce that this percentage of cost? Absolutely. 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 And over a period of time, right? Uh, I think acquiring new customers will always get expensive. Correct. But uh, but uh, the way I look at the business is the blended. Mm. Right. What is the blended CAC? Correct. And I'm seeing and that has been decreasing. Correct. Uh, yeah. Because the retention is really high. Huh. Uh, you know, uh, our our 12 month retention currently is at about 70%. Wow. Uh, and the repeat rate is almost at 43, 44%. Mm. Uh, and, you know, what, what happens is as you keep scaling, you know, my 25th lakh customer will not come at the cost. My 2.5 lakh. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Uh, uh. A customer came in, right? Mm. That will keep increasing. But the overall blend of this we will start decreasing once you have a very strong retention rate. Wow. So next, coming on to the team part, uh, building a strong team for any organization is one of the most important things. Absolutely. How are you and how how, how have you scaled from your four-member team to now? Would be how much? And yeah, so we are a team of almost about 130 people now. Yeah. Yeah. And how, uh, what's, what do you look at when you are hiring anyone? So number one thing is hustle. Yeah. What 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 is that man built of? Mm. You know what what is um, you know the sort of passion that he has? Uh, can I translate my vision to him? Uh, you know, will he be able to accept it? Uh, and you know, especially in the leadership sort of roles, we usually you know um, take up people on consultancy first. It was you okay. come work work for a month. Ah. Uh, you know, understand the brand, and then you know we we uh, long term. Uh, and towards the juniors, it is more about, you know, even though you don't have any experience, uh, do you have that, you know, ability to prove yourself? Number one. Uh, number two is, can you think big? And uh, can you just apply basic business logics? Yeah. Right. So these are the three key things that we look at. Businesses are all about challenges and risk. Uh, what do you think is the most challenging part of your business? And of course, supply chain, you mentioned, are there any other challenges which keeps you up at night? Um, I think look, when, when we started this business, we knew what the challenge was, right? Correct. Uh, which is inventory. Huh. Uh, and we had to, uh, you know, work really hard on uh, how do we make that inventory really, really lean. Uh, and over a period of time, we've been a- successfully been cracking that part. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would say from like a 120 day inventory, we've come down to almost a 75 to uh, 80 day sort of inventory, which again, keeps changing during growth phase, it increases, you know, during lean months. Uh, we bring it back to almost about 65 to 70 days also. So I think inventory is the number one thing. Uh, and the second is your CAC versus LTV, right? Mm. Uh, what is the sort of money that you've spent to acquire a customer versus what how much would you actually make out of that customer that you acquired? Uh, so these are the two key metrics, but I wouldn't say they don't, they keep me awake. It's sort of a thing, but yeah. Uh, these are two key metrics that my eyes are always on. Got it. On the capital like the fundraising part uh, as you're growing uh, are you planning to raise uh, money external capital or because when I was in the investing field uh, we always had one risk when which you mentioned about inventory risk is the highest and that can bring brands down uh, so are you planning to raise capital or what's the uh, outlook like over there with us it has been very clear that uh, we will only raise uh, you know certain amount of money that is required to grow the business mm. once we are sorted with you know everything that is required to scale a business mm. uh, so in terms of fundraising yes we are um, you know currently pursuing it uh, but again depends on the sort of partner because it's very difficult for a bootstrap uh, you know company to actually go <laughs> that direction of um, you know yeah. working with a venture capital but uh, I mean it's it's something that we have to evaluate over time mm. got it uh, last question before we move to the lightning round uh what are your words of advice to the entrepreneurs out there, uh, even in the fashion industry or whosoever is wanting to start something? What have been your learnings here? Yeah, I think the number one thing is perseverance. Uh, you know, how how passionate you are and how rigid are you on that passion is the number one thing. And secondly, how could you... Um, so the way I look at business is very different, right? Hmm. Uh, what are D2C brands currently? If you imagine... Um, you know, your father or grandfather, they were buying everything from one single store, store. going there because they had that sort of bond with that mm. particular retailer and they used to buy from there, right? Mm. Uh, and there was nothing special about that store. It was just about um, trusting that person saying that, pe mujhe acha quality milega. Mm. you know, I had a personal connection. And that is what D2C brands are trying to replicate online. Mm. Uh, so I think it is the way 
you portray yourself as a brand uh, how do you communicate that to your uh, customers what sort of customer experience um, you know you want to deliver and for me brand building is not just about me or you know the marketing team mm. it is more towards uh, how how will my security person uh, you know greet you when once you're in the office yeah. right mm. uh, from there to how do my uh, you know call center people speak to our customers uh, so that entire thing is mm. is what uh, you know uh, building a brand is uh, i think my advice would be you know just be consistent uh, that's that's the only way <laughs> you could find it yeah so uh, there's the highs and yeah, and yeah i mean you you should be just uh, you should be able to convert your lows into opportunities and then you know i i had three four such lows and i've always converted them into opportunities correct uh, and i think if you're able to think in that direction and crack it then sky is the limit wow okay moving to the lightning round uh, i'll ask you questions whatever comes to your mind you have to say absolutely uh what advice you would give to your younger self to my younger self uh get fit up <laughs> uh i think you like sneakers so uh, yeah. what's your favorite uh, sneaker i got jordans that's that's like the last one that i got for myself so is there a plan for stitch to go into shoes yeah i think we are going live in 2 weeks oh wow <laughs> <laughs> okay uh top d2c brands you use apart from stitch uh, a lot of them yaar uh, m caffeine is one uh you know boat is another one that um recently i've 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 bought uh, something from uh, what is that wow skin care as well ha huh. wow skin care yeah. got it understood uh one personality you look up to i think there are many uh but one that i actually look up to it again depends yaar i i think my father uh, he's he's like uh, a guy who i look up to as well as uh, someone who uh, really understands me Mm. Uh, and uh, controls me whenever uh, you know uh, he thinks that <laughs> i'm going out of control good <laughs> <laughs> uh, craziest thing you have done craziest thing that i've done uh, i don't remember any crazy <laughs> thing that i've done though <laughs> okay okay last question which i asked to all the guest uh, what is success for you success for me is um, you know that inner happiness uh, when when you're recognized uh that you know um whenever you're passing by and success is not monetary uh, mm. first of all for me it you know till the age of 30 uh, it was all about making money etc but post 30 it was more towards building a large company you know uh creating value so i think uh every team member of mine the day you know they feel proud of working at slits that success to me that's a different take but thank yeah. you so much <laughs> So thank you thank you so much for coming on the show and giving Absolutely. us insights I think lot of success yes, ahead for you uh, keep will will keep in touch always I'm obviously yeah thank, thank, thank you so thanks a ton